Hi everyone, I'm Patrick and in this tutorial we built a media library app with Python and also a dashboard that can automatically tag and analyze all your images and videos. I have so many images on my phone and I thought it would be really cool to automatically tag them so that I can filter them accordingly and also analyze them to get an idea of what I like to photograph. So the images will be uploaded and hosted in the cloud using the Cloudinary API. And then here in our app, we can display them. So here you see the tag clothing. Then you can also select all other ones and then also the most common combinations of tags. So let's select, for example, the coffee cup. And now you see it's displaying 12 images with coffee inside. And this is the first part of the app. And then we also built a dashboard to analyze the tags. So here we see, for example, a pie chart with our top 20 tags. So the top one is clothing. Then we have man, human face, woman, also skyscraper since I recently visited New York. Then we have the top five tags as a bar chart and also the most common combinations. So the top one is clothing and man. And then in the top five, for example, we also see man and woman. So apparently I like to take a lot of photos with my friends. So this is the app we're going to build. And in the first part, you learn how to work with the Cloudinary API to upload and tag your images. It also works with videos. And a quick disclaimer, Cloudinary sponsored this video. So a thank you to Cloud for sponsoring me and then in the second part you learn how to build this app with streamlit and also this dashboard with plotly so this is a follow along tutorial so nothing will be skipped you can just grab your laptop and follow me here if some parts are too fast then the whole code is also available on github I put the link in the description and all you need is a folder with some images that you want to analyze so let's get started all right, so first let's set up Cloudinary. And what is Cloudinary? So it's a very powerful media API where we can upload and store our images and videos. Then we can also transform them and optimize them on the fly and then deliver them to all our apps and websites. For example, if you want to build a Django or Flask website, then you can use Cloudinary to host all your images. And you can also use features on top like this auto tagging that we use in this tutorial. Then it also offers lots of different integrations and you can also manually manage your assets in the media dashboard. In this video, of course, we want to work with the API and do everything from code. So you can get started for free. For this, you can go to cloudinary.com or use the link in the description. So let's sign up for free. So after signing up, you should see your dashboard with the API credentials and also your current usage and everything we do in this tutorial can be followed with the free plan. Then you could also click on getting started and configure this for many different programming languages. In our case, of course, we want to work with the Python SDK. And then the core will be the media library. So here you could manage your assets and you could, for example, here upload them and then also delete them again. Of course, we want to do this from the code later. And if we click on this, then here you should see a URL. And this is, for example, what we would access in our application to display the image. This is where it's hosted. And what's really cool is that we can get different transformations on the fly, like this circle version, just by using a different URL. And this makes it super simple to get different optimized and transform media for your application. So now we want to set this up with the Python SDK. So for this, you can find the Python quick start documentation guide. So let's follow this. So to set this up, we want to install the Cloudinary SDK and also python.env to store our environment variables in a .env file. So let's go to our terminal and now we want to say pip install Cloudinary and also python.env and hit enter. And now we want to create a .env file and to get our API key, we need to go to our dashboard and grab this one here and copy this in here. So this will set the Cloudinary URL environment variable. And now let's create a file that we call Cloudinary service.py. Here we implement all the helper functions to work with the API. So let's follow the quick start guide a little bit more. 
Now let's copy everything from here into our file. So first we want to load .env and load our environment variable. variable. So let me actually get rid of all of those comments. Then we want to import the Cloudinary modules. Then here we don't need JSON. Then now we want to configure the Cloudinary service. So here secure equals true. And now if we run this, then this should print our cloud name and the API key. So let's run Python Cloudinary service.py and now this works. So now we can start working with the API. The first thing I want to do is upload an image. So let's get rid of this print statement and define a function upload image. This gets a file name and also an optional folder because I want to store all the photos in a new folder that I call my photos. So here first I want to get the file stem. So for this I import pathlib and then I say pathlib dot path and then put in the file name and then dot stem. So this will get rid of the ending dot jpeg for example and now only have pancakes for this example. And now we call the API so we say result equals cloudinary dot uploader dot upload and now we put in the file name and then we can also define different arguments. For example, we say the public ID equals the stem and then we can find this again. And we also specify a folder equals folder. And then we can return the result and this is everything we need to upload this. So let's call this and try this out. So here we say upload image and then we can simply pass in the file name. So let's try pancakes.com jpeg and then let's print the result. So let's run this and see if this works. And here I have a typo jpeg. So let's try this again. And you see we get the result. So if we make this a little bit larger, then we see this is a JSON data. So now a dictionary. So we get the assets, then here the public ID. So this is why I wanted to get rid of the ending. And then here we also have the URL that we can, for example, open. And now this should open this in our folder. So not in our folder in the browser. So now this is uploaded and hosted. And also if we now go to our media library, and then to folders, then you should see it created a new folder, my photos. And in here we have the uploaded picture. So this worked. Then here you would also find the different transformations that you can access with a different URL. And you can also click on metadata and here you see all the available metadata. And here you can also see the available text. So in this case, it didn't add them automatically yet. So we could do this manually. But of course, we want to do this from the code now. And for this, we have to enable a add-on. So we have to click on add-ons. And there you see all the available add-ons that you can use. For example, there is one to automatically remove the background. Then you have one for video moderation, video transcription, translation, and a lot more. You could also use the Google auto-tagging. But in this one, I want to use the Cloudinary AI Content Analysis add-on. This has powerful AI-based object detection and content-aware algorithms, such as object-aware cropping and this auto-tagging. And in order to use this, we have to first enable this so we can select the free plan. And then we have to add these two arguments when we upload this. So we have to define the model and then the auto tagging threshold, which defines at which confidence level this tag is added. So let's click on read more and have a quick look at the available models. So in our case, we want to work with the open images model, which is Google's open images dataset model that contains 600 channel objects. So let's go to our code and let's define a second function that we call define 
upload, um, define upload and tag image. And here it gets the same parameters. And now at, in addition, like we've just seen, now we want to add the um, detection model. So we call the detection parameter and the model is the open images one. And then as auto tagging threshold. So for this one, we use a very low one at 0 0.25. And now this is everything we need to upload and tag an image. So let's call upload and tag an image. And let's use the second example, which is this one here. So let's save this and then let's run the code. And it worked. So again, we printed the result. Now here you should also see the key tags and here it lists all the tags that it found. For example, the clothing, then it also puts the corresponding bounding box and also the confidence level. So yeah, this worked. And also if we go back to our um, media library, so let's go to our media library and open the new image. So there it's already hosted. So now we can click on metadata. And now as you can see, it puts the tags, clothing, human face and man. So yeah, this worked. So now we can upload and tag the images. Now the next step is to do this for all our images in this folder that I prepared. So I imported this from my iPhone. So let's create another helper function, define upload folder. And here we want to iterate over all the files and let's also keep track of how many we could successfully upload. So let's import OS and now we can say for file in os.lister and the folder is called photos. Then let's also sort this to see it in the same way that we are seeing here. And now we want to check if the file is supported. So we can say if pathlib.path and then put in the file dot suffix dot lower. If this is in all the supported files, then we can go ahead. So we want to define this up here as a tuple. So here we can put all the file endings that are supported dot PNG dot JPEG dot JPEG with an E and also the dot hike. So this is what the iPhone uses here. As you can see, a lot of those images are in the hike format and this is also supported in Cloudinary. So if this is supported, then we can go ahead and we want to wrap this in a try except block. So now we can call upload and tag the image. And here we have to be careful. So we first have to use photos and then plus file. And then we say n plus equals one. And then we can catch the exception as e. And then we say print, um, let's say failed for and then the file and then we also want to print the exception and when we are done we can print um, n photos uploaded. So now let's save this and then down here we can call upload folder and let's run this and first one small change I also want to print the file so that I can see the progress. So let's call Python cloudinary service.py. And as you can see, now it's starting and all the images are uploaded. So now we have to wait until this is finished. All right, and it's finished. So 449 photos have been uploaded. And if we have a look at our media library, then you should see all those new photos. And all of them should have tags, baked goods, fast food, hamburger. So yeah, this is working. So now the next thing I want to show you is how we can search with the API and then retrieve the images and tags again. 
So the first thing I want to do is to define a function get all tags. And now we search for all the available tags in the API. And there are different ways how we can do this. So there are different available APIs. For example, we just work with the upload API. Then we can also use the admin API and the search API and also the transformation URL API. So in our case, I want to show you how to work with admin and search very quickly. So to get all tags, let's define a empty list, all tags. And now we call tags equals cloudinary dot API dot tags. So this is the admin API. And here we can define arguments. So we can say max result equals 100. So I think by default, this is uh, 500. No, the default is 10 and it can take up to 500. Um, but we also work with the next cursor. So we can leave 100 and still get all the available tags. So first we extend all tags, uh, all tags dot extend with the new tags. And now we only want to access the tags field. Then let's get the next cursor by saying next cursor equals all, uh, sorry, tags dot get the next cursor. This can also be none if we already reached all results. And then we use a while loop and say while we have a next cursor and then we do this again so we can copy and paste this in here. And now as another argument here, now we use the next cursor parameter and say this is now the next cursor. Then we again extend this and update our next cursor. And in the end, we want to return all tags. So now if we call get all tags and now assign this to a variable all tags equals and now let's print all tags. Now this should work. So let's run this and see if it works. And the result is here. So here, this is now a list with all the available tags in my media library. So this is the first thing I want to show you. Now the next thing is to um, search for images. So let's define a function search image. And here we work with the search API. So we say result equals cloudinary dot search. And now here we can define an expression. So we can say expression and this is a string. So we say resource underscore type and then colon. We want to search for images and the tags equals, um, let's try, let's have a look at them. Let's try the tags equals wine. And then we can also do some more. So for example, we can say sort by, and then we want to sort by the public ID. And this should be in descending order. And then in the end, so here, for example, we can do more, for example, max results. And in the end, we want to call execute. And now we want to return the results. So we can say return results. And then let's print this or let's call this. So let's say result equals search image. And then we first let's print result. And then we can access the field total count and then we can iterate over this so we can say for result in result and then the key resources and now we can print for example the result url so let's comment this out and also this out and then let's run this again and it worked, so it found three images with the wine tag. So let's open one of those URLs and see if this is correct. Um, it's actually not 
displaying it here, so but it's downloading this. So I think this is because of the format, but there's one very cool thing that we can do with Cloudinary. So we can actually change the format also on the fly by simply changing the ending. So let's edit the URL and let's cut off the ending and then add the JPEG ending. So now if we run this again, then you should see now the images with the JPEG ending. And now if we open this, then our browser should display this. So yeah, here we have the image and we see correctly it contains a wine in the image. So this is working super cool. Now, finally, I want to add one more helper function. And here we want to define get all images with tags. And here, instead of using the search API, we again use the admin API like here and return all resources with tags. So we say all resources equals an empty list in the beginning. Then we say result equals, and then we say cloudinary.api.resources. And now we define our parameters. So the type equals of upload, then the resource type equals a image. This is the default, I think. Then we say the prefix equals my photos. So it should only look in our um, my photos folder. Then we also want to include tags. So we have to say tags equals true. And again, we use this max result equals 100. And then we um, extend our all resources. So we say all resources dot extend the result with the key resources. And now we also get the next cursor. So we say next cursor equals result with the key. Um, let's use the dot get and now the next cursor. So this can also be none. And then again, we do our while loop. So we say while we have a next cursor, then we do this again. So let's again copy and paste this. And here, um, let's indent this correctly. And then here we want to also now add the next cursor parameter. And this is the next cursor. And now in the end, we want to return this. So here we return all resources. And then down here, let's call this all resources equals. And then we have get all images with text. So let's print all resources. And let's also print the length of all resources because this is a very long array. So let's run this. And it worked. So as you can see, we have 451 images in our My Photos folder. So the 449 from this folder and the two that I uploaded in the beginning to demonstrate the upload API. So yeah, this worked. And now we have all the helper functions that we need. So now we can implement our app and then display the images and analyze the tags a little bit. So let's create a new file app.py. And in order to build our app, we want Streamlit, Pandas and Plotly. So we can install this with pip install Streamlit, Pandas and Plotly. And now we can import everything. So we say import streamlit as st, then import plotly.express as px and import pandas as pd. Then we also need collections import counter and we also want from iter tools, we want to import combinations to build some combinations of the tags. And then we also import the Cloudinary service. So first let's define a helper function, get images with tags. And here we simply return Cloudinary service dot get all images with tags. 
And the reason I'm wrapping this here again is because now I can decorate this with at streamlit cache. And now this will be cached. So this will only be called once or if something here changes. So let's call this and say all images equals get images with tags. And now this will be the whole resource. So I only want the tags. So let's save them in a list. All tags equals an empty list. And then let's go over this for image in all images. And then we can extract the tag by saying image and the key tag. Then we can also check if not tag. So uh, actually this is plural tags. So tags equals image tags. So we check if not tags, if this is an empty list or if person in tags. So in my case, I want to filter out this tag because it already contains um, human, man and woman. So I don't need person in addition. So here in this case, I say continue. And otherwise we say all tags dot extend the tags. Then we also want a separate list to create a list of lists. So here we say all tags lists dot append the tags. So this one here has a list of the tags for each image. And this one is only one list with all the tags inside. So now we want to create a counter object out of this. So we say counter tag counter equals a counter of all the tags. And now let's print, for example, the tag counter. And let's also print the all tags lists so that you can see the difference between those. So let's run Python app.py. And here we see the list of lists. So for each image, we have a list with all the tags. And if we scroll up, then here we should see the counter object. So the tag clothing has 124 counts. So 124 images with the tag clothing. This is the most common one. Then we also have men, human face, women. So that's why I wanted to filter out person, for example. And now let's continue. So now let's create combinations of those. So first, this is an empty list. And then we say for tag per image in all tags lists. And then for comp in combinations. And now we create combinations of the tag. So this should be plural tags per image and we want to create two combinations and now we say comps dot append the comp and then we want to create the most common one so again we say most common comps and then again the counter object with the comps and then we can immediately call the most common one with let's say the 20 most common combinations. So let's comment this out again. And then I also want to create lists for displaying. So I want the sorted tags equals and here we use list uh, comprehension. So we say item for item in sorted. And here we put in tag counter dot items. And as a key, we want it um, to be sorted according to the counts. So here we use lambda x and we return x one. So this is the count because tag counter gives us a tuple. And here we put a minus because we want to have this in descending order. And then let's also create the sorted tag strings. This is only for displaying. So here again, we use list comprehension with an F string. So first we want the item zero. So this is the tag name. 
then a space, then parentheses, and here we put in the item one. So now this is the count. And then we do this for item in sorted tags. So now we have all the objects we need. So let's create our streamlet app. So here we can say if underscore name equals equals underscore main, then we want to display the widgets and we want to display two different options. So this is a tuple. And the first one we call this image gallery here we display the images and in the second one we want to display the statistics so image stats then we say selection equals streamlet select box and we call this menu and here we put in the options and we can also move this to the sidebar like this and then we check if the selection equals equals image gallery. So this will assign the value to this variable. So in this case, we want to display the image page. So let's call a function that is called image page. And also let's give this a title. And here we say, and the title is the image gallery. Um, like so. And otherwise we say else we also give this a title. And in this case, we call this image stats. And then here we want to call a function that we call, uh, let's call this stats page. So now up here, of course, we have to define this. So let's say define image page and for now we say pass and then we also want to define the stats page and let's also call pass. So now let's start by implementing the image page. So in the image page let's first only call a function that we call show images and here for now we put in all images and later we want to also select only the tags that we want. So let's define this as well. Define show images and this gets the images here. And we want to display this in three columns. So we say columns equals streamlet dot columns and we say three. And then we iterate over this or over the images. So we say for index and image in enumerate images. This gives us both the index and the item. Then we define the column index. So column equals columns. And here we say index modulo three. And now we say URL equals the image with the key URL. And then we can create a column like so. So we say with column and then we say streamlit image and call the image widget. And here we can use the URL. So this is the URL that we get from Cloudinary. And let's also give this a the link below. So we say streamlit markdown and as an F string. And here we use the, uh, let's display the text link and the actual link here will be the URL. And before we do this, let's make one quick modification that we've seen before. So if the URL ends with um, dot hike, then we want to um, change this and say the URL equals the URL from start until minus five. And then let's add the ending dot JPEG. And now to run the app, instead of saying python app.py, we want to say streamlit run app.py. And this should start the streamlit app on your local host. And it worked. So here we have our app that is up and running. And at the sidebar, you see we have those two options. And for now, we display all the images here. So now let's add a selection to select only the images with the tag we want. So let's add another select box and we say tag equals streamlit 
select box and as label, let's say select tag. And here we put in the options. So this can be a tuple or a list, for example. So let's say the options equals the sorted tag strings. And for simplicity, I only want to, um, to display the 20 most common tags. And then I also want to add the combinations. So we say for item in most common comps. And then we say options dot append as a F string. And here we use the same formatting that we do here. So basically we first want to display item zero. So this is the first tag, then a comma, then item one and then a space and then parentheses and then the item one. So actually this is item one is the count and here we have Two, so we have to say item zero, zero and item zero, one. And now we can display this. So um, let's try this and refresh this. So if you go to the page, this should automatically be included and it worked. So here we have now our select box with all the tags and then the count. And in the bottom, we also see the combinations. So for example, the most common combination is clothing and man and clothing and human face or human face and man, clothing and woman. Um, yeah, so this works. So now after we selected this tag, then this is the exact string. So now we have to um, convert this to the actual um, tag again and get rid of the parentheses and the commas. So here we check or first we say index equals and then we say tag dot find the opening parentheses. This is always included. Um, and then we say the tag equals tag from the start until this index and also minus one to get rid of the space. And then we check if we have a comma in the tag. This means we have a combination. If this is the case, we want to say tag one and tag two equals tag dot split at the comma. And then we say tag one and tag two equals tag one dot strip so get rid of the white space and tag two dot strip and now we want to filter them so now here we say the images with tag equals and now we use list comprehension and we say image for image in all images if tag one in image and the key tags and also and if tag two also in image tags and then we want to display the images all images with the tag and otherwise if we only have one then we can do the same. So here let's copy and paste. And here we say image for image in all images, if the tag in images tags. So in this case, this is all that we need. So let's refresh our app and try this. So let's, for example, choose the tag skyscraper and this should automatically refresh the page. And as you can see here, now we only see the images with a skyscraper in it. So pretty cool. So now our image gallery where we can filter according to the tags works. Um, let's, for example, also try food. And now we see all the images with a food. So this works as well. So now we implemented the image galleries. And the next thing is to implement the image stats page. So let's go back and implement the stats page function. 
So here I want to display three Plotly charts with some statistics, a pie chart with the most common tags, a bar chart with the top tags and a horizontal bar chart with the most common combinations. So first let's only consider a minimum tag number. So let's say min tax number equals 20 by default. And then let's filter this. So let's say filtered tax equals, and here we use dictionary comprehension. So we say key and value, and then for key and value in sorted, and here we say tag counter dot items and then again we use the key equals lambda and lambda x and we return minus x1 so we sort this by the count and then we say if the value is greater or equal than the minimum tax number then we can say labels equals filtered tax dot keys and the counts equals filtered tax dot values and then let's also convert this to a list again so this is a list and this is a list and now let's create the first chart so first let's display a small title with markdown syntax. So this is a H4 heading and then we say top and then min tax number tax. And now here let's create a data frame out of this. So we say this is a pandas data frame where we say list and here we zip this together, the labels and the counts and then we also want to define the columns so we say columns equals and the first column let's call this tags and the second one let's call this counts and now we can create our plotly chart very easily so we say figure equals px dot pi and we put in the data frame and the values that we want to consider for the plot should be um, counts and the names should be the column that we called tags. So now we have the pie chart. So now we can also um, slightly modify this by saying fig up update update underscore traces so i want to change the text info a little bit so we can say text info equals and here we want to display both the label plus the percent sign then also we say fig update layout um update underscore layout and we want to give this a width of 700 and a height height of um, 700 as well and then we can say streamlet dot plotly chart the figure and now if we go to our app and refresh the page we should see our pie chart and it worked. So as you can see here, we have a pie chart and we can also hover over this. So this is interactive. And as you can see, clothing has 17% of the tags are with the tag clothing. So yeah, this is pretty cool to analyze your photos. So let's add two more um, Plotly charts here. So first we want a bar chart. So let's copy and paste this and also this. So here um, we want to say the, let's call this top five tags. And here we want to zip only from start to five and also for the counts from start to five. Then we use a plotly bar chart where we say X 
equals the tax and y equals the counts and then here we don't need this and for the layout in this case let's use 800 and 500 this seems to look good at my computer and then let's also copy and paste this one more so here we want to display the um, most common combinations and for this we need to get the combinations so let's extract them by saying the labels equals a list comprehension and as a string here x0 and then for x in most common combinations and we do this in reversed order from start to end with a step minus one so this should actually be after the closing parentheses and then the same for the um for the counts so we say counts equals and the count is x1 for x in most common combinations and then here we can get rid of this and get rid of this and the columns are called combinations and counts then here this is again a bar chart with x equals counts and y equals the combinations and now here we say the orientation equals horizontally then for this layout we give this 800 and let's say 600 and this is all that we need so now let's again refresh our app and let's scroll down and here we see a value error value y is not the name of the column in the data frame so let's have a quick look at the um, second one so here this should be a capital c for counts so let's again refresh our page and now we see the bar chart with our top five tags clothing man human face woman and skyscraper and the most common combinations are clothing and man clothing and human face human face and man clothing and woman and so on so yeah i think this is pretty cool to analyze all your photos and yeah this is all that i wanted to show you and implement for this app in this tutorial so yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And by the way, you can get both light and dark mode just by changing this here in the settings. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, leave me a like and also check out Cloudinary with the link in the description. You can get started for free. And then I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.